peace, love, and brown rice, our diet of the 60s, we were so alive. Yeah. That's the haiku for this reading as we go into the I Ching. At least 3,000 years since the time that writing began, the I Ching. And here we go on that time. So we hear the call. Number 18 of the I Ching. Gu, decay, corruption, repair. That's the cycle, man. Above Zhen, the quiet mountain, unshakable, steady, firm, and still, and below is Sun, the root, the standing on a firm platform, nourishing penetration into the heart of the matter. And man, these days, isn't that what we need, you know? I like what Bob Dylan said when he said, don't follow leaders, talk to parking meters, and that's where the wisdom is, I think. The wisdom. You have the ability for great advancement now. First look to where there are deficiencies in your life. Make plans and allow for correction. Stay steadily on course and your advancements will be profound. Profundity, yeah, man, it's time for that in your present situation, dig it, man. You got some disharmony going on, it might be in your health or your business or love, whatever it is, on your path to being one with the divine, wherever your challenges are now. Know that you are in a positive flow and also know that you've got to make some corrections. Don't hold back now, because procrastination right now, it's not advised. Do the work, chop the wood, carry the water. Your truth lies in practicality and reality. Dig that, will you? You have been reacting to old ideas and painful experiences of the past. Do not hold on to that stuff. You're gonna benefit now is to look at the old patterns and just make corrections. Don't hold on to that. Man, this happened to me as a child. And the, yeah, it did. And oh man, honor it, but let it go. Correcting your thinking and making new positive plans will correct the deficiencies that are not allowing for the full flowering of your success. Not allowing you to be who you are, man, right? You're going to open up into your great successes and the greatness of who you are as you shed old skins. As you do that, know you will be vulnerable during this movement forward. Protect yourself. We always got to do it, man. Put a blue light around yourself and protect yourself with an effort to be mindful, to be in gratitude. And this will be your cloak of protection. Look deep into the foundation of what you've created, who you've associated with, what your relationships have been and what they are to see where you've been in denial, that there is some decay beginning to eat away at what you have built and worked for. Look, man, that's the natural way. Things grow, things decay, and then they die, and that's part of the deal, right? So look to where there's decay. Do a diligent survey of your body, your mind, and the foundation of your consciousness. In that, you'll be able to identify where the decay has become, begun. You know, and if, you, and if any of you are sailors, man, you know you got to do a survey of your boat and see if you got a little bit of rot here, man. you got to clear it up. 
as you do this survey, you're going to identify the corruption at the foundation of your old ways of thinking, the places that you need to be repaired, what needs to be renewed. Your growth is dependent on reevaluating and correcting your path, and you can do that. That's the time. You know, there's openings in life, and they come. And when we draw this particular hexagram, this gua, no, that it is there to help us to see where we've been thwarted in our attempts to move forward, where we've been stuck from not having our completion. Well, that's real, man. You haven't invented that. It's real. You know, the ego wants to keep you from success, right? To hold you back so the ego stays. That's the negative ego. And there may be some inner disturbances, some stuff that wakes you up in the early morning hours, right? Before the sun has risen and the distraction in your daily routine. If that's going on, it is a signal. Beep, beep. It is a signal that the benefit now is to call on your resources to assess where there is decay or weakness in your matrix. Come to stillness and make a plan. The universe responds to a plan. Make this plan of correction and stick to it because you can do it and it's the time for that. Examine your situation and where it is out of harmony with universal truth. Do the work, that's capital W. Having a new plan is vital right now. You know, it, when we look at the early uh, writings on the oracle, the Yi Jing, as it was called, the changes, the ideograms for this hexagram indicate to wait three days before you make any moves, before you do your repair. That, as you reference that, that says three days. It's a period of contemplation, a period of meditation, and of concentration. And man, this is good advice as there are some bizarre things happening. And what's going on is not like any other time. It's different, you see? Normally, we can spot something that's out of order, and our first thought is to move immediately to fix it. Oh, I could fix that, wow. In this situation, however, that would not be a benefit, as things are not normal. And man, we're coming into a new normal. If you were to move too quickly, you will guide and glide over the fine points that need attention. You've got to pay attention. And you'd miss seeing these little places of root of the corruption, right? You know, there could be corruption in your business, man. Somebody could be taking advantage of you. Or it's in your relationship. And just clear it up. Don't let it grow. Deal with it now. It may be an idea that's been corrupted, cor corrupted and it's led to an addiction. Or it may be that a personal agreement woven into the fabric of your plan has been corrupted, maybe by greed or by infatuation, you know, that one. Whatever the case, you are called upon to move without fear as a light-bearing warrior into the heart of the matter. Note well now. The reference to three days before and after, that's what we find in the original text of the Yi Jing. It's an instruction for slowing down, going into contemplation, taking stock, being mindful of your every move. You're not going to find that this is tedious because it's going to be easy and satisfying and liberating, man. And boy, it is a time for liberation. You see, this state of mindfulness if you enter into that, you're going to be with the mysteries of the place that you have in the whole of all. And you will access your intuitive wisdom. In that place, you will find the joyous rhythm of knowing oneness with all. It is imperative not to jump in too fast, not to jump into this change, rooting out the decay. Take your time and be with compassion. Do not push yourself to the edge of your limits. When you find an aspect of your situation that brings up fear, sadness, doubt, shame, then you've hit on it, man. That's You got it. And then it shows you where exactly you need to address the decay that is present. All right? So now, 
take the ship in for repair, man, to go into the docks. <laughs> go in for repair at this point. It will tell you of a change of approach, maybe a different way of thinking. It could mean rooting out people or situations that are not in harmony with your truth. And this is the action. This is the action that brings change for the better, which places you right where you need to be to work for your own clarity and for progress in your relationships with community, relationships, and associations. Yeah. Be unrelentingly honest. Whew. You know, it's hard sometimes. In some study where they say we, people tell 50 lies a day, I don't think that's true. There's a lot of them, you know, where we avoid stuff or, you know, we just kind of want to gloss over something so you don't hurt somebody's feelings. Well, man, get over it. Because you got to look at your recent behavior. you got to look at your old ways of thinking and then dig into them and try to assess your problems that have been in the past and how your old pattern thoughts, your negative habits, and your fears have held you back and placed a burden on others. All right, now dig that. It's placed a burden on others and have made them miserable or bitter. Man, you got a window of opportunity. you got to let those people out of jail. <laughs> Man, because if you've got somebody there that you are messing with and you think that's the way it should be, God, think about your relationships. Think about business. Man, if you're holding somebody away from who they are because of what you're doing, you've got to recognize that. And as you see your attitudes that are working on negative, replace them with positive ideas, positive actions. Timing and consideration are of utmost importance as this cycle will soon end and a new one will begin. Look into the past and examine what has led to this period of dissolution. Liberate negative emotions by acknowledging them, right? That's the way you do it. Having compassion for yourself and changing your thoughts, this does the repair. A great and a joyous transformation awaits you. Don't let what lies ahead of you be daunting. Don't let it daunt you or cause you to stop because you're afraid of failure, or oh, you're afraid of success, you know that one. To make your foundation strong and steady at this important juncture, look to what led you here. And from this vantage point, you see clearly where you diverted from the path of authenticity and truth, and where you've strayed from working for the greater good. When you find that man, shift and change, man, as you undertake the pathway of correction, that's the medicine path. The benefit is an open heart. The benefit is being in gratitude, where your thoughts have no judgment or blame. Not that you've got to blame anybody else or blame yourself, because this is the time for compassion. And when negativity or doubts appear, and appear they will, man, recognize them, take a deep breath, and then on exhalation, let them go using focused intent and prayer for listening to the intuitive voice of wisdom for direction. In this action, you're going to be liberating negative emotions, right? Shifting them. And you're just going to send them into the light of conscious awareness where they will leave you alone. Look, you might have to repeat this action. Right? You might have to go in deep and dig deep. You might have to replace it until you feel the release, but it will work and you're going to feel it. There's no doubt about that. And when you do that, you're going to be free. You're going to be free to give and receive more love as you proceed on this path towards bliss, towards accomplishment and abundance in all things. Proceed with your work, capital W. And take time to play and have fun. Don't leave that behind, man. Look to that child within and play. Make time for being enjoyed. Dance with life and dance with love. As universal consciousness is playing the tune, all you have to do is come to stillness as you turn your passion to listening. And that's what it's about. We've got to listen we got to listen. we got to see where things are. we got to see 
how things were, and we've got to open up to that, and that is of utmost importance now. You know, things are changing so rapidly that we do need to correct what's going on. These places in our life where we found deficiencies, that we got to open up to them because this time is a great time where you're going to be able to improve your external life. And where it requires improvement, that's where you've got to move on it. You got it? You know, these deficiencies might be in your health, might be in your physical body, your work, your love relationship, or your business, man, or your spiritual well-being. Look, wherever it is, you know, you got to get in there. It might be psychological deficiencies, but you don't have to go, you know, get check yourself into the hospital, man. But look to it. See where you're holding on to old stuff, old injuries, man. That's, don't do that. That's a fool's errand, you know. Whatever happened, anything that happened, it's over, right? It's over. Ain't going to be able to change what was, but right now we're able to change what is, and that's what this is about, you see? Going into where your thoughts have no judgment of, of blame of yourself or of others. So my haiku this week was a reflection of the 60s. As we're seeing and going in this time of self examination, this time where we're looking so deeply into ourselves, And as we do, we're finding things that have been hidden and have begun to rot. And we've got to change that. So here we are. Again, my haiku, peace, love, and brown rice, our diet of the 60s. We were so alive. Namaste, my sisters. Walk the walk, talk the talk, be the goddess that you were meant to be. If anybody gets away, pull your sword, man. Take them out. Got to. And men, you got to be there. You got to be strong. You got to be both strong and also you got to look to the anima and anima that lives in you. Dig it, man. We're all feminine and we're all masculine. Be us born a man or born a woman, it doesn't matter. We've got it all, we've got to honor it all. So I say namaste to all of us and to they. You can dig that? that going in your life and open your heart because that's what this time is all about. That's why this particular call has come up. Go, number 18. As we say here in the Yucatan, in Mayan, in Lakesh Alakin, I am the other you. And I like it that way. Yes, I do. B. 
be the love that you desire. Teach peace with every step. Listen to the children's laughter. Listen to the breeze in the trees. Listen to the night birds singing because there's wisdom all around you at every minute. I gotta say it again. In La Kesha Lakin, I am the other you. Namaste, y'all.